today we'll be creating this really quick sci-fi animation loop. We're going to divide it into sections and tackle it in a really simple way. So let's figure out how we can do this in geometry nodes. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and we'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we're going to set up the six different planes on which we're going to make our effects. It's essentially going to be three planes and then those three copied over to the other side. So let's add in the first plane by pressing shift A, searching for a grid node and plugging that into the group output. Then we'll change the size on the X and the Y to 10 units so that we have a much larger plane, after which we can go ahead and duplicate this. So we press shift A and search for a joint geometry node so that we can have all of the different planes present together. And then we can search for a set position node and just set one below and one above by pressing shift D and bringing it up here. Now we can connect all of these up and then simply plug these into the joint geometries. Next, to actually shift it up and down, we can go to this top set position node and change the Z value to 0.5 and that way it moves up by 0.5 units. Similarly, on the bottom one, we can change the Z value to minus 0.5 and this is what we get. Next, we can shift all of these down below the Y axis before we rotate them to the other side as well. So we press shift A and search for another set position node, plug that in here and just bring it down on the Z axis to something like minus one. After that, we have to rotate these and join them together on the opposite side. So we can press shift A, search for a joint geometry and then press shift A and search for a transform geometry node. Now for the transform geometry node, we can plug this geometry from the set position into the input and take the output and plug it into the joint geometry. Then if we just rotate it on the Y axis by 180 degrees, we should get a mirror copy right on top present like this. If you want to increase the distance between these, you can always play around with the Z position on the set position but I'll leave it at 1 or 1.5 for now. Next we'll place the camera so let's select the camera over here press Alt G to clear location Alt R to clear rotation and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now remember we scaled up these planes to be 10 units long which means if we shift the camera back by 5 units it'll come to this edge so that's exactly what we'll do by pressing G Y minus 5 and that brings our camera to this perfect edge. Then we can press 0 on our numpad to go into the camera view after which we can select our camera properties from here and change the focal length down to 25 so that it's far more wide angle and we can also change the viewport display passport out all the way to one so that we don't see anything outside the camera view. I also think that this distance is too large so I'll keep it back at minus one itself. Next I'll select the camera and just rotate it on the Y axis by minus 45 degrees and that just gives it this nice angle that I think makes it more visually appealing. Now we can start off with each of the layers separately. So the first layer that we'll deal with is the topmost layer and that's simply going to be a bunch of grids. So let's take all of these, shift them to the side so that we have more space to add things in. Let's go ahead and bring this down and bring this up and start moving around with these things. So first up, if you actually go to wireframe view, you see there aren't too many lines. So to increase the resolution, we'll press shift A and search for a subdivide mesh node, plug that in over here and increase the levels till we get something that we're happy with. So I think a value of three is good enough. So I can now switch off my wireframe view again and then press shift A and search for a mesh to curve, plug that in over here and then search for a curve to mesh to make it into a mesh that will be visible in our renders. We need something for the profile curve. So we'll search for a curve circle and simply plug that into the profile curve. But before we plug it in, we'll reduce the radius down to 0.01 or 0.02 based on on how thick you want it and we don't need this high of a resolution so we'll change the resolution down to five then we'll plug the curve into the profile curve and this is what we have now i'm going to reduce the radius even thinner and actually make it 0 0.002 and that way they just are really thin lines that look really good then we have to set material for this so let's press shift a search for a set material node plug that in after the curve to mesh and choose the default material then we'll go to the material tab change the name of the default material to grid lines then we'll press this plus button to add in a new slot which we'll use for the next section which is the second layer that comes out from here and joins into the joint geometry which is going to be a bunch of points. So to get a bunch of points we want it to be in a very systematic grid so we search for a subdivide mesh node plug it in here and make give it one level of extra subdivision compared to the subdivide mesh. So I'll go ahead and give it a level of four and then on every single point that is now created I want to just instance a cube which will act as a point. We press shift and search for an instance on points node plug that in over here and for the instance press shift and search for either a cube or an icosphere 
here, I'll go with a cube. Now I don't want the cube to be this large. So I'll change the size on X, Y, and Z to 0.1 and plug the mesh into the instance. Now I think even 0.1 is too large. So I'll reduce it to 0.01 and just keep changing it till I get a value that I feel is big enough, but not too big. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and set the material. So press shift A, search for set material, plug that in here. And now we're going to use this second slot. So let's press this plus button to create a new material, call it grid points, and then select grid points on this set material. Now we can start off with the third layer, which is behind the grid points and the grid lines. So press shift A, search for a distribute points on faces node, plug that in here so that we just get a bunch of points and then we'll instance some planes onto these points. So press shift A, search for an instance on points node, plug it in here. And for the instance, search for a grid and plug the mesh into the instance. Now, of course, the size of the planes are way too large. So the first thing that we can do is change the size on the X and the Y to something like 0.1. And then for the scale, we can press shift A and search for a random value node and change the min to something like 0.5 and change the max to two and plug this value into the scale. So that way we just get some randomization on the scale as well. You you can always play around with this to get something that you like. I think I'm going to make them much larger and make it a size of four, but I'm going to reduce the density to five. Next, there might be some regions where these grids are overlapping with each other, like over here and things like that. So to prevent those, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift them a bit on the Z axis randomly. So I press shift A, search for a set position, plug that in over here. And for the offset, I use a combine X, Y, Z node so that I can move them only on the Z axis. And for the Z axis, press shift A, search for a random value node and just make the the max as something really small 0.2 maybe maybe the min can be minus 0.2 and plug this random value into the z value of the combine xyz and that way they just move slightly up and down on the z axis which prevents any of them from overlapping now that we have that set we have to give it its own material so again come to the material tab add in a new material slot press this plus button to add in a new material and then change this name to grid planes and then press shift a search for set material plug that in after the set position and change the material to grid planes once you have all of that set, we can go ahead and just add in a few more points that will be present in the volume in between these regions. But we're not going to use a distribute points in volume node, but instead we're just going to use this same grid that we had here and distribute a bunch of points. For that, we have to use another joint geometry or we could use this one technically, but to keep it more organized, I'm going to use another joint geometry by pressing shift D and plugging it in here and combining this original set position directly in here. Again, if you feel like there's too many lines being drawn, it's actually as simple as taking this and just pressing shift D and bringing that out over here and making just a completely new tree. And in fact, maybe this might be better because I won't want all the points to come till the ends. So I'll actually change this size from 10 to five and then plug this into the joint geometry. Now we have a new plane that's present right in the center. That's half the size of the others, but essentially we want to instance a bunch of points onto this. So let's press shift A, search for a distribute points on faces node, plug that in over here. And now you have a bunch of points. Now we can move these points up and down by pressing shift A and searching for a set position and doing the same thing that we did for the grid planes right now. So on the Z axis of the set position, we want to move them to so press shift A, search for a combine X, Y, Z, plug the vector into the offset. And then for the Z value, search for a random value node and plug the value into the Z. Now, again, they're all going to shift up. So we're going to keep the min as minus one. And that brings all of them down around the center. Now, if you feel like this is still too strong, you can always change the min to minus 0.8 and plus 0.8. And that way they just stay even closer to the center. However, once you're done with that, you have to instance some points onto this. So let's press shift A, search for an instance on points, plug that in right here. And for the instance, this time we'll use an icosphere with quite a few subdivisions. Let's take the icosphere, increase the subdivisions to something like three or four to make it nice and smooth. And for the radius, we'll make them really small. 0.01 should do. And then plug the mesh into the instance. Similar to what we did for the planes, we need to give them some random scales. So let's search for a random value node or take this one and press shift D and plug the value into the scale. However, for the min and max, we'll change the min to a value of 0.5. And for the max, we'll change the value to something like three. And that way we just get a nice distribution of sizes. Maybe I'll change the original radius up to 0.05 and then I'll change the max down to one here and the min to 0.2. Of course, you can play around with the seed until you get a distribution that you're more happy with and then set material just as usual. So let's shift all of these to the side, add in a new material slot, add in a new material and then name this volume points or spheres, but I'll keep it volume points for now. And then over here, I'll press shift A, search for a set shade smooth node first and then search for a set material node 
and plug that right in after the set shade smooth. Then for the material, choose the volume points and that should be it for your geometry node section. Next, we can start off the actual texturing of each of the layers. So let's set all of our defaults by going to our render properties, switching on bloom and screen space reflections. For the bloom, we'll expand it and clamp it down at something like five, after which we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame 150. We can change the output folder to wherever you want it to be and file format you can choose whichever one you please. I'm going to go with FFmpeg video and coding. I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 and have an output quality of perceptibly lossless. Then I'll switch my viewport shading to rendered and I'll switch off my overlays after which I'll select the default light and tap delete to remove it. Finally, I'll select my geometry node object and change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Now we'll start with every single one of the materials. So we have volume points selected by default. So let's start off with that by selecting the principal BSDF, tapping X to delete it, then pressing shift A, searching for an emission node and plugging the emission into the surface. Now for the strength, I'll use a layer weight node and a color ramp node for more control, after which I'll plug the facing into the factor and take this color and plug it into the strength. Then I obviously want the strength to be more than one as well. So I'll search for a math node, plug it in here. And I'm gonna first add 0.5 and then use a power node so that everything that's still below one goes down to zero and everything that's above one becomes very, very high. So let's search for another math node, change it to power, and then just start increasing the exponent till you see this really bright border and dark center. So I think this is exactly what I want. So let's now change the color to maybe this lime green color and that should be it. Then I'll go to the world and just reduce this all the way to black so that there's no world lights that are affecting my scene. Next, I'll go back to my materials then choose the grid planes first. For the grid planes, I just want to play around with the alpha. So I'll go down to the settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. And now I can search for an object info node by pressing shift A and searching for object info and taking this random value and plugging that into the alpha. Apart from that, I'll change the emission and make it the same lemon green greenish color and I'll just bring it down by a little bit and now you have different brightnesses of this green present and whenever there's some overlap you can actually tell the overlap and how things that are overlapping end up becoming stronger due to the nature of how alpha works and adds up as layers build. So I think that gives it a really nice look so I'll leave it at that and then we can start off playing with the next material so let's go back up choose grid points now the grid points I want them to be fairly bright dots so I'll delete the principal PSDF press shift and search for an emission node plug the emission into the surface and this time I'll change the color to the same lemon green except I'll keep it fairly desaturated but I'll increase the strength to something like 10,000. Of course because it is clamped down it won't cause too much of a problem and it'll look fairly good. Finally we have the grid that's remaining so let's choose the grid lines and we'll make this emissive as well so delete the principal BSDF search for an emission node plug the emission into the surface give it the greenish color I'll make it completely saturated and I'll give it a strength of something like five. Now that we're done with all of the materials we can switch from object to world and play around with the world background which is going to be fairly simple just adding in some volume so let's search for a volume scatter node and plug this into the volume and I think the default density is a little too high so I'll reduce it down to 0.8. That looks good enough and because the volume has actually reduced the brightness a bit I think I want to increase the brightness of the grid planes so let's just select it over here change back from world to object and then just change this from this darkened value to a brighter value and I think that looks pretty good. Now we can start off the animation so let's start by adding in an empty so let's switch on overlays press shift a and search for an empty plane axis then we'll select the camera from our outliner followed by selecting the empty so we have have to press control click or shift click if you're clicking in the 3d viewport but once you've selected both of them press control p and set parent to object then you can select just the empty and press the back arrow to go to frame zero and tap i rotation and then you can go to the last frame which is going to be 150 and then press rz 360 to make one full rotation and then tap i rotation then come down here and press t linear to make it a smooth loop now if you feel like this is way too fast all you have to do is increase the length of the animation so i'm going to actually make it 15 seconds long and change this end frame to four 450 then I'll select this and just drag it over to 450 and that should give a really nice smooth loop and I think that looks good enough. Once you're happy with the way the animation has turned out, you can set a few final touches by going to the render properties and playing around with the color management. So you can actually change the view transform from filmic to standard, and you can also increase the contrast as well. So it's really up to you as to what you think suits your scene the best. But another thing that I want to do is select the camera and give some depth of field. So let's select the camera options, check depth of field, and I'm going to actually change the focus distance to five meters so that it goes to the center. And I'm going to reduce the f-stop to 
something like 0.5. And I think that looks really cool with the way the depth of field works in this region. Again, it's completely up to you as to what you think is best suited for your animation. But once you're happy with the way it looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. If you've stuck around so long, thank you so, so much for watching. And I'm really glad that you found it useful enough to stick to the end. I post videos every single day and I take all of your advice and suggestions into consideration. So surely let me know what you want to see next in the comments and I'll definitely try to create them. Until the next video comes out, which is going to be tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.